Virtual machines are beating hard of any cloud out there. When working with Azure, it is critical that you know at least basics of them. Today, a quick introduction into Azure virtual machines. Stay tuned. So the Azure virtual machines. So let's start with virtualization. Virtualization is emulation of a computer system. Those virtual machines work similarly to how physical computer would work. And what you're purchasing is a guest operating system being emulated plus the space to do your user configuration. And in Azure, this is your virtual machine hosting environment. It provides you a scale from even tens or hundreds to thousands of servers. It's on demand, so you can purchase it whenever you need it. And there's a bunch of tools allowing you to work with virtual machines very easily, very fast. One thing to remember is that when you're moving from on-premises, you had to manage everything. And when moving to the cloud, there's already a few things that you will not have to manage because cloud provider will manage this for you. This will be a storage, so actual hard drives underneath your virtual machines, networking, so networking cards and compute, so those actual physical machines. And what you will still have to manage is the virtual machine itself, operating system, the runtime, in case of, let's say, web application, this could be IIS on the Windows or Nginx on Linux, etc., etc. So you have to still manage that. When compared to platform as a service, you have to manage a bit more. So if you would be using app service, you wouldn't have to manage the runtime operating system or virtual machine underneath that system. This is advised that you still use platform as a service whenever possible and only go back to virtual machines whenever necessary by your design. And in case of SaaS, of course, the application is being managed by the cloud provider as well. So how does virtual machine service work? There's going to be a couple of things that will be created when you create a virtual machine. So I want to talk briefly about each one of them. First of all, you're going to have a virtual machine. This is your logical management resource. So you're a single point of management for a virtual machine. You can scale up and down, add the disks, configure extensions and a lot of different stuff. When you create a virtual machine, first of all, you're always going to create an OS disk. So it's an operating system where your system is installed. There's also boot volume in there. Additionally, with each VM, you will also get a temporary disk. The cool thing about this, this is an SSD, a very fast SSD that is included in the price of VM. So you don't really pay for it additionally. What is good use case for that is a short term storage for your application data. If you have some swap files, caching, you can use that temporary drive to put the data there. Just don't put anything permanent because you might lose it during the maintenance. Additionally, each VM can have a data disk from one to many data disks, and this should be used for application data. There, those disks can be very large and the performance lies depending on the size of the virtual machine and the disk that you choose. What virtual machine also has is a network interface, in short, NIC. This is your connectivity between your virtual machine and your virtual network. It is your place where you configure private IP for your virtual machine. And this private IP is directly connected to a subnet, which the network interface resides in. And subnet is part of the virtual network for you to segment your network just like in any on-premise environment. And subnets are part of virtual networks. And virtual networks are your networking building blocks in Azure where you configure your VPNs and address spaces for the elements of your network. So if you assign an address space on a virtual network, it is propagated to a subnet and then add to a network interface, which assigns a private IP to a virtual machine. It can be both dynamic or static. So whenever any other resource within that network connects, it can refer to that virtual machine using that private IP. But what is important here is that there's another element here. It's called Network Security Group. It's a logical object that allows you to filter all the traffic to that virtual machine, either outbound or inbound, and allows you to create the rules in order to filter that effectively. Additionally, you can create a public IP for your virtual machine. So this public IP will allow you to connect to virtual machine from the outside of your network. And you can also assign FQDN name for that virtual machine if you want to. Lastly, 
You also have diagnostic storage. So this is where you store your boot and OS diagnostic logs for your virtual machine. So if you have any issues with starting virtual machines, this is the place to look at. And this is a standard storage account in Azure. As you see, there's quite a lot of resources that will be created when creating virtual machine, but most of them are very simple in the use case. So what are the key features of virtual machine? First of all, you can have both Windows and Linux OS. You can use extension and automation options. There's a lot of those options for you in Azure to configure virtual machines, even without logging into the virtual machine itself. You can do custom images if you want to. So if you can pre-build the image for your virtual machines and use that as a starting point for the new virtual machines, you can configure high availability, you have rich monitoring capabilities and three most important ones are availability sets, availability zones and scale sets. So let's talk about those a little bit. Scale set is a feature of virtual machine in order to allow for high scale computing. And it is created from a single image. And with that image, you create one or more identical virtual machines. And what is additionally provided here it's a load balancer. So whenever there's any traffic coming to your scale set, it is automatically load balanced across those servers. And with auto scaling features, you can define either auto scaler rules based on a schedule or daemon to create more virtual machines based on those rules. Additionally, you have something called availability sets. And the way they work is by grouping your virtual machines. And you have something called full domain. Those are the groups of virtual machines that they have the same power source and the same networking switch. So they protect you from the hardware failures of that kind. Additionally, each full domain has a lot of update domains. Update domains is again a group of virtual machines that can be restarted at the same time. And if you configure a virtual machine availability set, for instance, for free, and let's say you configure that set for free full domains and for update domains. What Azure will do is will choose automatically which update domains and which full domains to use. You can have up maximum three full domains, but up to 20 update domains. And when you start creating virtual machines, Azure will automatically put them in respective update and full domains so that the high availability is achieved, depending on your configuration. One thing to remember is that if you're working with multi-tier applications, Remember to put different tier of your application in different availability set because you cannot choose which update domain and full domain does it go to. Therefore, you would end up with a scenario where it is possible that your entire tier will go down because the data tier will be put at the same, for instance, update domain. So this is very important to remember here. And lastly, you have something called availability zone. Availability zone is also a group of servers but they share the same cooling power and networking across those servers. And those are pretty much the separate data centers. So they protect you from data center outages and you can choose which virtual machine lands in which availability zone. Those are the all available options for you to use when choosing high available and highly scalable environment for your virtual machines in Azure. There are many typical scenarios for using virtual machines like on-premises gateway services or bastion hosts, high performance computing, batch jobs, cluster solutions like HD Insights, Databricks, etc. Lift and shift scenarios where you're just moving to the cloud without redesigning or your hosting service that is unavailable in your cloud. Otherwise, like for instance, in the case of ETL, this could be Airflow. So there's a lot of scenarios that you still want to use virtual machines for, but if you have a service that is available in Azure as a platform service equivalent, try to use that instead. So what are the demos for today? There's a lot of demos. First of all, most of them are very quick, but I will start with creating virtual machine. Then I will talk about what are the Azure resources that were created. I will showcase those in a portal. I will connect through remote desktop services to a virtual machine on Windows. Then I will create another virtual machine using CLI to show you how fast it is. Connect through SSH configure that virtual machine using extensions, manage network security group, and also manage disks from the portal perspective. So let's jump to the portal. Typically, I like to open this menu and hit create resource to create all the resources. But in case virtual machines, I much more prefer going here to the virtual machines tab and hitting add, because brings me to the proper template. 
and allows me to create a resource group. I'm going to create a new resource group called VM Demo. Next, I'm going to call my new VM called VM1. I'm going to choose a North Europe for, for my region. I'm going to choose availability options on this is the place where you would configure one of those options that we're talking about, like a scale sets, availability zones and availability sets. But I don't want to do any of that right now. I'm going to choose Windows Server 2019. I'm not going to choose a spot instance. Spot instance is an interesting new thing in Azure where you are able to get reduced price virtual machine for temporary time for some small batch processing. In case of size, I'm going to choose something bigger because it's virtual machine with Windows Server. I'm going to choose DS3 V2. I'm going to need to choose a virtual machine username. So that's going to be admin user. And I need to type a password. Later, you have inbound port rules. So you need to specify how you're going to connect to this. You can either specify none, which is the secure way of doing that, and then opening specific ports yourself on a network security group. Or you can do it in a quick template here by specifying that you want to connect through remote desktop services to this virtual machine over port 3389. Of course, you get a warning here that this should not be used for production and you should use specific IP addresses later on. Next, you can go to the disk tab. In this tab, you can specify the type of disks. So you can have either standard HDD, standard SSD or premium SSD, depending for your processing needs. For the OS type, of course, the, the fastest, the better. And additionally, you can create and add additional disks at the time of creation here if you want to. Next, you go to the networking tab. This is already pre-configured, so there's going to be a new virtual network VM demo VNet created with a default subnet. This VM will also have a public IP assigned. There's going to be a network security group attached to it with a configuration for remote desktop services. And we don't put this behind the existing load balancing solution. Next, we go to the management. This is where you can get additional monitoring, diagnostics and uh, security center subscription identities. Auto shutdown, which is one of the cool features, you can enable your VM to be automatically shut down at a specific time. When creating new virtual machine in a portal, this is automatically enabled. So make sure to change that if you don't want it. And next in advanced, you have some extensions if you want to. For now, I'm going to leave it and hit review and create. And hit create. Remember to check the price if it suits your needs. So let's wait for that deployment. The virtual machine was created, so we can go to the resource. Of course, we're going to be navigated to the virtual machine itself. So I'm just going to quickly show you what was created in the resource group. As you see, seven resources were created and the ones that what we were talking about. So diagnostic storage account, virtual machine for management, IP address, network security group, network interface, etc, etc. Most of the things that you want to manage about the virtual machine are still under virtual machine settings. So if you go here, you'll have your name of resource group, the status of the VM is currently running, the public and the private IP address that were assigned from your network interface configuration. So if you're just going to copy that, you can start connecting the name of the subscription, some of the most common information. And here, most of the things are actually just a quick overview tabs and quick navigation to the other elements. For instance, if you click disks, this is the way you can actually manage disks post creation. In extension, you can manage extensions. In configuration, you can change everything about your virtual machine that you need to. You can change that availability and scaling if you're using scale sets, etc, etc. So the most important thing for us right now is this connect button. You have three options to connect to the virtual machine through remote desktop, SSH or Bastion host. This is another service in Azure, which we're going to cover in the future. But for now, we're going to use remote desktop services. And to do that, simply click on this download RDP file. You're going to get this RDP file on your drive, which you can use to connect to this virtual machine. And if you go to your downloads folder, there's going to be a VM1 RDP file available for you. Hit connect and you need to choose more choices, use different account and specify admin user 
and provide the password that you typed during the creation. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And you're connected to your virtual machine. One thing that I like to do when working with virtual machines is not using the default remote desktop experience. I like to do and use something called Remote Desktop Connection Manager. This is a very small, very old tool from Microsoft that is also very simple. It allows you to create a list of virtual machines and connect to them. And in here you create a profile, I call mine RDP, and it creates a small file on your drive which saves that configuration. So it's very cool to, that you can save entire application configuration when working with multiple virtual machines. And to add new server, you simply right click, add a server, and you need to provide a server name. In this case, it has to be a public IP of your virtual machine. So let's paste it in. You need to provide the display name. So our display name was called VM1. It's not required, but it's nicer to know which virtual machine you are connecting to. You need to provide logon credentials, in which case it's again admin user with our password and no domain. But one very cool thing is, is the reason why I actually use it is the remote desktop connection settings. Because here you can unselect this box and select same as client area. When you do it and you hit connect to this virtual machine, it will initialize with the resolution that fits into this window, which is much more convenient when connecting to virtual machine. So let's try that. Let's not ask about the certificate again and let's connect to this virtual machine. And as you see, this is much easier to manage than with the full screen experience. Next, I want to show you how easy it is to connect and create virtual machines using command line interface. Go back to the portal and open Cloud Shell. Inside of the Cloud Shell, we can use Azure CLI in a bash to create new virtual machine. You will actually need only two commands to do that. First of all, we're gonna create a resource group. And to create a resource group, we're going to use AZ group create, call this group VM demo CLI and create it in North Europe. A group was created and now we're going to create a virtual machine. And to create a virtual machine, you simply have AZ VM create. I'm going to call it my Linux virtual machine. And this will be residing in VM demo CLI resource group. Again, we're going to create an admin user. But this time we're gonna use SSH, so we're gonna generate SSH keys, and this will be Ubuntu machine in also North Europe. So let's hit create. A virtual machine was created, and to confirm everything works fine, we can actually SSH to that virtual machine. So let's try that. SSH, type SSH in a command line. You need to specify admin user, which is the one you're connecting to virtual machine, add, and you need to specify a public IP, which we actually have here. So let's paste that in and press enter. Do you want to connect for sure? Yes, I do. And let's connect. Notice that we were able to actually connect to virtual machine using SSH because the keys were generated locally and added to our drive. So let's log out from this virtual machine for a second and open our home folder. And if you ls there and go to your Adam folder and .ssh, you will actually see your keys being stored here. So make sure not to leave those later on, but download them for future use. But also for security reasons, because those are stored on your storage account. So let's close this. Let's open resource group. And notice that if I would actually go to our resource groups, we would find VM demo CLI with pretty much the same elements for the Linux virtual machine. So let's go back to our Windows virtual machine. And right now let's demo an extension. I'm gonna use a quick extension when I will upload a PowerShell script, a very simple PowerShell script that will install a web server and say hello world with the name of our virtual machine. The script is very simple. It simply adds a Windows feature, a web server, which is IIS, and adds a content to a default HTML file, which responds with hello world with the name of the computer that we're on. So let's go back to the extensions tab, hit add extension. And in this case, we're gonna use custom script extension. Hit create, and you only need to provide the script files with optional parameters. 
So I'm gonna upload my web PS1 script and hit OK and simply wait. And the extension was installed, you get the status of provisioning succeeded and would it work if I copy this public IP address into the browser? Will it work? Let's try that. So let's paste the IP and we're gonna get the response that the site is not reachable. And why is that? Well, it's actually a very simple answer because we never opened a port for this website in our network security group. And to do that, you go actually a couple of places to do so. You can actually go to the resource group, go to your network security group, and in here, in the inbound security settings, you need a new rule because we never opened this virtual machine for a traffic over HTTP. So we need to add a new rule that allows the traffic from any source, any port range into our port 80. And we call it priority of 100, so the highest priority, and call it HTTP port. And of course, underscore here, hit add. Now the rule is being created. We need to wait a second. Rules in network security group are being resolved by priority going from the top to the bottom, from the lowest to the highest number. And when they are encountering, each rule is specifying if the traffic is allowed or denied. So in this case, we allowed port HTTP. That means we can go back to our site, refresh it, and as you see, hello world from VM1. So everything worked perfectly fine. Remember here, you always get this information that your RDP is still open. So if you don't need RDP anymore, later delete that rule or specify a specific IP address, maybe from your office or your work home. So the very last demo that I want to show you is I'm adding and managing disks. So I'm gonna go to my VM. So let's scroll it up. Let's open VM1, go to the disks, and let's add a new data disk. I'm gonna give it a number of one. So this is the logical number. We need to create a new disk because I don't have it now. So my data disk, I'm gonna place it in the same resource group as previously. I want it to be empty. So source type is none. And I want to change the size. I don't need as big as 1024 gigs, which is one terabyte, because I'm gonna pay for it. Very important remark here is that depending on the size of the disk, you get maximum of operations per second and maximum throughput for your disk. But this also correlates to maximum throughput of your VM. So the two needs to be aligned. Definitely check the documentation when choosing the VM size and the disk size if the throughput of the disk is something that is important to you. So right now I'm gonna choose 256 gigs hit create and wait for the creation of the disk. When the disk is created, remember to make sure to hit save for the virtual machine to update it to use that disk after creation. Once this is done, go back to the remote desktop and perform very last step. You can do it for UI or PowerShell. In the UI, you go to the file and storage services, go to disks, and you will see that there's a new volume that is currently unknown. And if you would open your virtual machine PC, you would see there's no partition currently using this new volume. So what you need to do is create new volume, hit next, again next, yes, okay. Specify the volume size, drive letter, hit next, file system type, and hit create. Hit close and go back to your PC. And now you're ready to use your newly attached volume on a managed disk in Azure. The topic of virtual machines is so big that you could spend months or years researching it, but you should at least cover the basics and know the basics by your heart. That's it for today. If you liked the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe if you want to see more and see you next time.